How's everybody? You ready to see this fantastic play they're going to put on here in a little bit? Well, I'm excited. I got to practice with it for the first time last night, and I can tell you what, these kids are fantastic. If you walk out of here, you're not blessed today by what these kids do. We need to take your blood pressure. Because I guarantee you it's going to be really great. So, last thing you want to do is listen to me for a few more minutes. So, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. We're going to, then we'll turn it over to John for a few minutes. We'll get these kids up here, okay? So, join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Father, we ask that you forgive us for where we have failed you. Father, we want to thank you for these, these children that we have that's going to perform today. Father, they are the future of our church. They are the future of our nation. Father, I ask that you continue to bless these young people. And you continue to use them to spread your word and to glorify your name. Father, be with us today. As you open up our hearts and our minds, because you're going to have a message for us in this. And I just pray that we accept that message. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. As, as the pastor said, I, I truly believe this is the best play that the CIAs have ever done. And if you would listen to the message, it's incredible. And these kids have worked so hard on this. It, it, it's, you're going to be blessed today. Uh, if this don't light your fire, your wood's wet. I, I guarantee you. It it's probably is. It was very, very loud, so I kind of held it off. Is that a little better? Okay, I just have a couple announcements. But before I do that, uh, Coach had a couple things he wanted to say this morning. Thank you, Coach. Um, just to continue on very, very briefly, we, we have several opportunities to serve in this church, and I, I mention this every, every week. So look at your bulletins. If there's anywhere that you'd like to plug in and be a part of, I know that the help would be greatly appreciated. And, and keep in mind that not only Falls Creek's coming up, but also um, we have, uh, um, I just went completely, absolutely blank, Vacation Bible School. Um, coming up as well, and I know Betty would like to help. Uh, she has lots of things that we can be doing, and um, so looking forward to that. Our prayer list is, our WOM prayer list is still in the bulletin. Please continue to pray for these folks on, in the bulletin. A CIA fundraiser uh, dinner will be next Sunday after service. The Bible studies, we're continuing to, to have the men's Bible study at Bill Foster's house, 7 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. Also, uh, the ladies are having their Bible study on the second and fourth Monday uh, at 2.30. And, and also, there's some things that are needed for VBS. If you'll notice here, pill bottles, any size, 
uh, socks, large children's or small adults, white or light colored. Singles will be okay because they'll be paired with other singles. They're going to use these for uh, vacation Bible school. Coming in May, uh, Mother's Day, of course. Uh, CIA's last night before summer break is the 11th. And then food pantry distribution is the 21st. So uh, lots of things going on. Uh, did I forget to mention anything? How about birthdays or anniversaries this morning? No birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. How about, uh, let's do our scripture reading this morning. This morning we're going to be reading in Proverbs, the 19th chapter of Proverbs, starting in verse 11. Would you stand with me this morning as we read God's word? Proverbs 19, starting in verse 11. God's word says, good sense makes, us, makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. A king's wrath is like the growling lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish son is, is ruined to his father, and a wife's quarreling is continual dripping of rain. House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Whoever is gener generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. A man of great wrath will pay the penalty, for if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept inst instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the moisture we receive. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Lord, this morning as these young people come before us and deliver this message, Lord, I pray that each one of us in this building, our hearts are open and we receive it and use it. Lord, each one of us are truly under construction. Lord, you have a plan for our lives, and we're thankful for that. Be with us and be with the young people, Lord, as they serve you, and what a blessing it is to the adults to see these children excited about serving the Lord, serving you. Lord, we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Could I have our ushers come forward this morning, please? Caden, would you ask a blessing on our offering this morning?
just a week to make the moon and stars. The sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. I love you and hate you, he loves me. Cause he's still working on me. We're kids under construction. Our father, the builder, has a master plan. We're kids under construction. Yeah! Welcome to Sunday Morning Live with Simon Burgundy. Good Sunday morning. Simon Burgundy here. Breaking right now our top stories across town at the New Site Community Church. Covering this event as our on-site reporter, Monica Fisher. Thanks, Simon. As you can see, I'm standing outside the new site community church, where a ceremony to dedicate this new building is getting ready to start. While the dignitaries, which include our mayor, councilmen, and our very own Little Miss Sunshine, who will be cutting ribbon, are gathering for this occasion. I have here a general contractor, Mr. Joe Carpenter of Carpenter Construction Company. Mr. Carpenter, this is Mr. Well, Monica, I've been in this business for many a year, but I have to say this project is my absolute favorite. Why is that, Mr. Carpenter? Well, you see, I've been a member of this congregation for a long time, and we outgrew our first building, and we had no more room to expand. So the church brought this prime property. Say, didn't this land used to have a factory located on it? Yes, in fact, it was a total mess, and we had to tear down the entire thing before we could build it right. Monica, we have some footage of that. I believe I covered that story six months ago. Yes, I believe you did, Simon. Back when I had your job and you had mine. Not that you were bitter or anything. Yes, Simon, I did have to adjust my attitude a tad. A tad? Whatever. Let's roll the footage for our viewers. It was quite a demolition. I remember it like it was only yesterday. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's a radical position. We need a demolition. This is what we know. It's got to go. There's no value in it. So let's not waste a minute. We know without a doubt. We've got to clear it out. Huh. It's got to go. It's a radical position. We need a demolition. Let's not mess around. It's coming down. We're done with the talking. It is time to get things rocking. We know without a doubt. We gotta clear it out.
disastrous mess. Why they, why they had to tear the whole thing down is beyond me. Could have saved a ton of money <coughs> if they had. Uh, Simon, Simon, my friend, you were on the air. Oh, hello there. We had just witnessed a fascinating demolition live. It was quite exhilarating to watch. Good thing. Simon, don't you have the general contractor on site? Yes, I have Fred Carpenter. It's Joe. Joe Carpenter. Yes, Joe. Now that you've demolished the old building, what's the next step? I will let my project manager, Bobby, speak to that. Hi. Well, the th first thing we've got to do is get a plan. Like a blueprint? Well, it's more than a blueprint. We have a master plan. A master plan? Yes, sir. We need to know exactly what we were building. It's just like in life. We need to have in mind so we'll know what we want our lives to become. Simon, what are they talking about? A model for one's life? <clears throat> I'm not sure we're all following you. Can you and your crew explain this model for our viewers? Absolutely. Absolutely. I seek godly wisdom on how to build my life. And daily I surrender, Lord help me do what's right. Renewing my mind and reaching in love. And like Jesus, please my Father up above. More, more, more like me, Jesus, like him every day. More, more, more like me, Jesus, like him in every way. Jesus, I want to grow in wisdom. Like Jesus, I want to grow in stature too. And find favor with God and man. My Jesus, I want to grow like you. Like Jesus, I want to grow in wisdom. Like Jesus, I want to grow in stature too. And find favor. With God in man, my Jesus, I want to grow like you. I will seek godly wisdom on how to build my life. In daily surrender, God help me do what's right. Renewing my mind and reaching in love. And like Jesus, please my Father up above. Like Jesus, I want to grow in wisdom. Like Jesus, I want to grow in stature too, and find favor with God and man. My Jesus, I want to grow like you. More, more, more like my Jesus, like him every day. More, more, more like my Jesus, like him in every way. More, more, more like my Jesus, like him every day. More, more, more like my Jesus. Like Jesus, I want to grow in wisdom. Like Jesus, I want to grow in stature too. And find favor with God and man. My Jesus, I want to grow like you. More, more, more like my Jesus. Like him every day. More, more, more like my Jesus. Like him in every way. More, more, more like my Jesus. Okay, that's a wrap. Good, good luck, Bridget, John, whatever your names are. It's Bobby and Joe, sir. Whatever. The station will probably send me back out in six months to cover your progress, probably when it's freezing and 10 below. Well, thanks for stopping by, and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless. Ta-da, I've arrived. Oh, Sasha, why are here, you here today? Now, Joe, you know I'm the decorator on this project. Why shouldn't I be here? Well, we haven't even poured the foundation yet. In fact, we have to level the land first. First, it's got potholes and cracks everywhere. Oh, Joe, I can tell you some shortcuts to make it look marvelous. Some put a hue, some paint. There, no one will know the difference at Tadah Designs and Project. Is don't waste your time or a dust. 
Oh, look, I can't see. Natasha, you know that's not how we do things around here. You can say that again. Remember, there are two kinds of builders in this world. In fact, let us tell you about these guys. Crew. sand. Hmm. But there's another kind of builder who was wise. There was a builder who built on the rock. A solid foundation. I'm trusting in God. And nothing can stop him. He worked day and night. Stone up on stone. I've got to build it just right. So he built his Need a rock. You need a rock. You gotta build your home on solid ground. You need a rock. You need a rock. You need a rock. You gotta build your home on solid ground. Build it on the rock. You gotta build it on the solid rock. Build it on the rock. You gotta build it on the solid rock. Sand castles just can't stand. You need a rock. Sand castles made by human hands. You need a rock. You gotta build your home on solid ground. You through the winter storm, it won't fall down. You gotta build your home on solid ground. You need a rock. Good morning, crew. Good morning. Hey, Piper, got the plumbing supplies? Taylor, do you have all the framing lumber? Come on, Bobby, while they're setting up, let's go check on the master plan. Yes, sir. Hey, Piper, move your pipes. You're blocking my crew from setting Maybe up. You're blocking my crew. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, my crew got here first. So? So my job's more important. Oh, yeah? Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What's going on here? Dave and I are about to take them up the part and then he should go first. What? Crew, we talked about this, about our attitudes during the building process. Yes, and if we want God's blessing on our work, we've got to care about one another and even put their needs first. Now, it, it, it isn't always easy, but we must stick with it and persevere because perseverance will produce... Godly character! Yes, and remember what I said. Jesus gave us the beatitude so we can check and see if we have... An attitude of gratitude! There you go. We want God's blessing in our lives and on this project.
here. It's so cold. In fact, it's so cold outside. How cold is it? It's so cold. I had to open the freezer to heat the house. <laughs> Circle up, crew. I got a call this morning from the TV station, and they're sending over someone to follow up to show the viewers our progress. Simon should be here any minute. Right here, ma'am. What can I do for you? I'm Monica Fisher from Sunday Morning Live, and I'm here for the interview. Hey, aren't you the news anchor? Where's Mr. Simon? Can you say corporate shake-up? Corporate, corporate shake-up. Well, Mr. Simon Burgundy is at my anchor desk now. He was promoted and expects me back in the field. Out here in the freezing cold. Not that I'm bitter or anything. Sorry, Monica, but we're glad you're here. Yeah, well, I was lead anchor for five years. Never missed a cue. I had top rating. Well, I'm sure you did. But Monica, believe me, these things have a way of working out. Just give it a little time. Miss Monica, I like your power mattress. It's beautiful. Well, it's a trophy gift <coughs> from my producer after five years of hard work. Well, I like it. I like your bracelet, too. Is it made of gold? Yes, it is. Can you say retail therapy? Retail, retail therapy. therapy. Ma'am, I think my crew is hit on something. What? Well, you know, some things that happen aren't so pleasant at <coughs> the time, but our God can make something beautiful out of all kinds of situations if we just what allow him. Mean? Well, just think what, what an oyster had to go through to make that beautiful pearl necklace you're wearing. Maybe God has a plan like that for you.
I'm glad you got my call, Sashi. It's time for the finishing touches. Okay, I bought swatches and t-shirts. Sasha, Monica. It's so good to see you. You two know each other? Yes. Sasha used to be our set decorator at the studio. She was wonderful. Yeah, well, that was a hundred years ago. Well, how about that? Sasha, I never had a chance to say goodbye and to, and to say that I'm sorry the studio cut your job. It, oh, honey, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Because of that, I got the courage to start my own decor decorating business. It's called Ta-da! Ta-da! What a perfect name. I'm so happy for you. So when you lost your job, Sasha, God knew it would be a blessing in disguise? You can say that again. It was definitely a blessing in disguise. When I lost my job, I was so sad and thought that God had forgotten all about me. I know the feeling. But I knew God had a plan for my life. So what did you do? I prayed, Monica. I prayed.
Hey, Monica, you who? Monica, are you ready to roll? What? Are you ready to roll? Um, yeah. You know, I think I am. Okay, in three, two, one. Hi, this is Monica Fisher reporting from the almost finished new site community trip. I've got to tell you, this building is more than just a marvelous project. It's much more than that. The crew has put their heart and soul into this mission, and I will be thrilled to be back with them on Dedication Sunday, because I, for one, want to know more about their master architect and his plan for my life. Welcome back to Sunday Morning Live. Now let's go back to Monica Fisher, where the dedication for the New Site Community Church is about to start. I'm thrilled to be here right now. I'd like to introduce my pastor. Your pastor? Really, Monica, when did this happen? This happened when I met some of the most wonderful people while covering this story. They introduced me to Jesus, and I learned he had a marvelous plan for my life. Oh, let's welcome Pastor Williams, who will be leading us in the dedication this morning. Father in heaven, it is with great joy that we gather to honor you this morning. Let us be a place where your young people gather to praise you, serve one another, and build lives that glorify your holy name. May it always be a place where broken people can come and find new life, hope, and a future in your Son, Jesus Christ. We dedicate this church to you. And all God's people said, Amen.
build it on a rock. You gotta build it on a solid rock. You gotta build it on a rock. Gotta build it on a solid rock. You need a rock. You gotta build your home on solid ground. Home on solid ground. Wasn't that great? Well, it's already a quarter to 12, so I'm, I already planned a short sermon, so I'm going to try to get this short. So what we just, I don't have a mic, do I? I got to get up there and stand in one spot. 
To me, that's a, one of the greatest blessings we can have as a church, is to see these young children up here performing and serving, and, and serving God and giving God the glory for it. You know, we see in the Bible what Jesus thought about little kids. The time that the parents were trying to bring the, the, their little kids up to see Jesus, so they just set him on his lap, and the disciples tried to rebuke the parents and, and try to make them go away, but Jesus told them, no, let those little children come up to me. I've always wondered, I wish they'd put it in the Bible, and one of these days when we all get to heaven, we're going to know this answer. What exactly did Jesus say to these little children as they sit on his lap? And then after that, what did these little children accomplish in their lives? They actually got to sit on the Son of God on his lap. And he actually talked with them. And one of these days when we get to heaven, I want to sit down and talk to these children. They got to do that that day and find out exactly what their life was like after that. Can you imagine? But today I just want to talk about a couple of children that we see in the, in the Bible. No, there's we see stories about children in the Bible, and it talks about the name. No, we see when Joseph was a young man. And we see other stories of people. How about David? As a young boy of 14, he kills Goliath. That's a story we always tell. We tell it over and over again. It's, it's a big story that we use in Sunday school for our little children so that they know what they can accomplish. But there's two stories I want to talk about real quick this morning. And their names are never mentioned in the Bible. But they are mentioned in the Bible, and their stories are mentioned in the Bible. And anytime anything's mentioned in the Bible and, and God finds fit to put it in this book, it's an important story. The first one I want to talk about is about a young, a young Israeli girl. Syria just conquers a lot of land. And it's in 2 Kings chapter 5. There's a, an officer of the Syrian army. His name was Naaman. Naaman commanded a, a lot of men. He had access to the Syrian king. But one thing we don't know about Naaman is this man had leprosy. He had a condition that kind of made him an outcast, even though he commanded the, the king's armies. If we look at 2 Kings chapters 1 through 5, it says, Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He also was a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back a captive young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus, and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. This young girl was actually captured by the Syrian army from the land of Israel. And she is actually a, a servant. She is a slave to this family. I kind of think of her as a missionary. Now, when we send missionaries out, they volunteer to be missionaries. But this young girl was a missionary, but... God had ordained her as a missionary, but to get her to where he needed her, he had to allow her to be captured by the Syrian army. So this young girl, this young maid, and when you look at the, the original, he, uh, original Hebrew language that those heavens was written in, and it talks about a maid, it's talking about a girl 16 years or younger. That's what a maid is. So this is a very young girl, and I, and you got to feel that this girl was very intimidated by her surroundings. She'd been taken away from her family. And she'd been, had become a slave for this mighty man. But she also knew that this man could be healed. All you had to do was go to Israel and talk to the prophet. Now this prophet she's talking about is Elisha. So Naaman went to the Syrian king and asked for a letter to give him safe passage to Israel. 
and he went to Israel, and he talked to the king of Israel. And the Israel king actually sent him away. He said, no, we're not going to help you. But word got to Elisha, the prophet. And Elisha sent his people out to bring Naaman back. Well, what Elisha told Naaman he needed to do was go to the Jordan River and dunk himself in the Jordan River seven times, and he would be healed. Well, if I get into the details of the story, Naaman didn't want to do that. Naaman had brought gold and clothing and other things, and he thought he could just buy his healing of his leprosy. He did not trust what this little maiden girl said. All you got to do is go to the prophet, and he will heal you. But he thought he could buy the healing. So he actually was going to head back home. But then he suddenly had a change of heart, and he came back. And he dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, and he was healed of his leprosy. This man was healed of his leprosy. He was also, after that, he also trusted in God. He actually took back dirt from Israel that he could use for worship. This is because of a young maiden, a young girl that's under 16 years old that had been taken captive. But she had a love of God. That she was willing, even in her circumstances, even to a man that we, we would consider our enemy, she was willing to tell him about God and get him in the right direction for his healing. That's one story from the Bible about a young kid, a young girl that stood up and stood up for her God and spread the word of God. That ought to be an example to us adults that we can do the same thing. Even for our enemies, she did it for our enemy. We need to tell our enemies about God. We need to tell them about the salvation. And that story is a pure example of Jesus, too, and what our salvation is. Naaman wanted to buy the healing. There's people all over this country, all over this world, that think that they can buy their way into heaven. But Elisha made it real clear to him, you cannot buy your way into heaven. All he had to do was go to the Jordan, dunk himself seven times in Jordan, and his healing was free. Just like our salvation is free. The next story I want to talk about real quick is about a young man. He's in the book of John. We only hear a very little bit about him. But it's in chapter 6, and Jesus had just finished, or was just getting ready to feed the, the multitudes. We've all heard the story about Jesus feeding the multitudes, and the multitudes, that we were told, was 5,000 men. One thing you'll learn when you do a lot of study in the Bible, it when it says 5,000 men, they're not counting the women and the children, but there were women and children there. And they think there's probably more like twenty or 25,000 people there, but there's only 5,000 men. But Jesus wasn't just feeding the 5,000 men. He's feeding their wives. He's feeding these men's families. So we're talking twenty or 25,000 people that Jesus fed on this day. But where are they going to get the food to feed this 5,000 or this 20, 25,000 people? His apostles that were with him this day, they talked. Well, we don't have enough money to buy this much food. And we can't send these people into town. They're too weary. They would never make it. Well, Jesus, what are we going to do? Well, one of the disciples, Andrew, found this young man. He had his lunch with him. Five loaves of bread and two small fish. That's all he had. Well, you got to think, well, that was... Jesus performed a great miracle here, but he could not perform this great miracle without this young man. This young man offered his lunch to Jesus. This young man didn't have to. This young man could have said, no, this is mine. I'm going to eat it. Or he could have took off running with it. But he willingly gave his lunch to Jesus. And Jesus blessed this food, and we all know the story after that. Jesus fed the multitudes, and when they went together up the scraps, they had 12 baskets full of, of scraps, a basket for each one of the disciples. But here we see another story of a young person in the Bible who had faith. He willingly gave to Jesus. That should also be an example to us adults. 
You know, we pass around the plates on Sunday mornings for our offering. Essentially, that's what this young man did. He gave an offering to Christ, and Christ took this offering, the food to feed one person. And Jesus took this offering from this young man and touched the lives of 20 to 25,000 people. So that's another example for us adults that when we give something, and we give it with an open heart like this young man did, that God is going to use what little bit we give him He's going to expand it. He's going to use it to reach more and more people. That's what we here as a church are to do. We're to take the offerings that we receive, we're supposed to use it to reach out into the world for Jesus. But we can't do it unless we do it with an open heart and with a pure heart. And that God direct us in what we're to do. I think it's important that this boy's name was never mentioned. We're not to do it for our own glory. He didn't do it for his own glory. That's why his name is never mentioned. The young girl in Syria, her name is never mentioned. Why? Because it wasn't important. What was important is what came of their actions. In Syria, what came of her actions was the Syrian officer trusting God. And what came of this young man that gave his lunch that day? What came of it was Jesus feeding 20 to 25,000 people. So we need to remember that. It's not so much what we do, but what we do and what God does with it. It's not about that we get the glories, but that Christ gets the glory. That's the only thing that's important. But in order to serve our God, there's something we've got to do first. We got to do what this young maid and this young boy did here that we read about in the Bible. The first thing they did was they trusted in something beyond themselves. They trusted in God. This young woman knew by God's power that her master could be healed. I really think that this, this, this young boy, when he offered up his lunch, that he knew he'd seen Jesus' miracles before. He knew that Jesus could take that and do something great with it. When we give our life to Christ, and we give it openly and freely, and then we allow him to do that work like we saw here in, in these two stories, God can do great things in our lives. God can work a miracle in us. He can have us doing things we never thought we could do. I never thought I'd be up here talking to people in a church. I was too shy. But I gave it over to God and let him do the work through me. Moses, was a, was a, he stuttered. He didn't know how to talk right. But God used what he had to perform miracles. So my question for you this morning, are you ready to let God come into your life and allow God to start doing the work that he's able to do through you? like he did through these two young children in the Bible, and just like we see him doing with these young people we have in our church that came up here and performed this play today. Are you ready to turn your life over to God and allow him to touch other people through you? Well, you say, I don't really have anything to offer. This little boy hadn't much, didn't have much to offer. He had his lunch for that day. That's all he had to offer, but 25,000 people were touched that day through Jesus. So my question is to you today, have you turned your life over to Jesus to allow him to work through you? Have you made that one little commitment where you accepted Christ as, Christ as your Savior, where you accept the fact that he shed his blood for you so you wouldn't have to die for your own sins? That's all God, that's all God asks. Accept his son. Accept that, the fact that he died for you on the cross. Accept the fact that his blood was shed. So that you could have eternal life. It's very easy. Some people think that receiving salvation is, is complicated. It isn't. Because there's nothing you can do except to accept it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Just like the Syrian officer tried to buy, buy his healing. And Elijah says, you can't buy this. 
Many of us think we can buy our salvation. We can buy our way into heaven and we can earn our way into heaven. We can't. But we can receive it for free. So this morning, I want everybody to stand up if we have this invitation. I told you it's going to be a short one today.